Welcome back to the Empire of the Isles, a rich Victorian-inspired fantasy world with a distinct style and an exotic cast of characters. For Dishonored 2, we wanted to explore a new location, Karnaka, the jewel of the south. Our approach to world creation is very layered. Our art and design teams work together to create a strong sense of place with a well-realized culture. It's based on the people living there, the work they do, the architecture, economy, the climate, even the food and songs. In order to bring Karnaka to life, we've created a custom game engine designed to support our signature art direction and level design. We wanted Dishonored 2 to resemble a painting in motion, so we've given considerable thought to our lighting and the way it plays across every surface. We've created custom tools to support the interruptible real-time narrative scenes necessary for a stealth simulation. And the same is true for our approach to audio, both in terms of atmospherics and stealth gameplay. All of these details make Karnaka more vivid thanks to our new technology, which we call the Void Engine. In crafting spaces for you to explore, we've got several creative goals. We want the environment to feel coherent and complete, plausible. Where do these characters live and how do they get to work? Is there a, vi a viable pathway that makes sense? Where do they take their breaks or stop for lunch? But it goes further than that. For Dishonored 2, we felt compelled to ask ourselves about the history of a given street or shop. What was there a decade before the player arrives in Karnaka? Often, you can see the layers of history, watermarks on the wall from past floods, peeling posters and advertisements from years ago. We want every market, every alley to tell a story and to offer you the chance to see something novel or intriguing. Dishonored 2 starts and ends in Dunwall, but most of the action takes place here in Karnaka. Emily Caldwell. Loyal subjects, we're going through a difficult time, but today we honor my mother, the late Jessamine Caldwell. May her memory survive through the ages. Emily. You look tired, Father. Every year I think the anniversary of Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. I wish your mother was still the Empress. I don't think I'm very good at this. You're still learning. Don't worry about the rabble-rousers, and we'll catch the Crown Killer, eventually. People are saying it's you, but these assassinations are a misguided effort to protect me. No, someone's trying to make us look guilty by targeting your enemies. I wish I could just run away from all this. Sometimes you do. You think I don't know about your nights out on the rooftops? Courage. The ceremony will be over soon. Royal protector and father. I should have passed a law against that combination of titles years ago. When an otherworldly usurper seizes the throne, the fate of the Empire is left hanging in the balance. Dishonored 2 offers you the choice of playing as Empress Emily Caldwin or the Royal Protector Corvo Itano. Emily and Corvo are both fully voiced this time with their own perspectives and emotional responses to the events transpiring around them. Whether you choose to play, whoever you choose to play, you've got to flee Dunwall, your home, and travel to Karnaka in order to unravel the threads of a conspiracy and take back what's yours. I've got to get away. I should talk to the captain of that ship.
Dishonored is known for unscripted, simulation-driven missions where no two players ever have the same experience. <clears throat> there are many pathways to explore as you penetrate well-defended locations, many, uh, numerous ways to find and eliminate nefarious targets. In crafting the missions for Dishonored 2, we've put a much greater emphasis on big, interesting themes, either from a gameplay or fictional standpoint, making each mission a wildly unique place to explore. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Today, we're going to show you the Dust District, an industrial ruin ravaged by terrible storms that hit at random intervals. In the Dust District, a militant religious faction called the Overseers is at war with the Howler Gang. The leaders of both factions are trying to take each other down. You can side with the Overseers or the Howlers or neither. There are many ways to complete the mission. Everything you see here is rendered in the Void Engine, designed to create atmospheric and exploration-rich spaces. our target, Vice Overseer Burn, we've got to get past a Grand Guard checkpoint sealed off by a wall of light, a cruel security device reinstated by the Duke of Circonos. Orders from the Duke. We're losing too many people. Good soldiers blinded by that hallucinogenic powder the Howlers use, then stabbed to death or dragged down by the Abbey's hounds. One young lieutenant got hit by an Overseer grenade, that was it. He was one of the Duke's safety cousins. Let's hope they do enough damage to each other so the fight goes out of them. That won't happen until someone manages to kill either Paolo or Vice Overseer. We've made much greater use of vertical space for Dishonored 2, encouraging players to explore the rooftops above the streets. alters visibility for the AI and for the player. A random storm hits and Emily comments on it. Many of the security devices in Dishonored 2 are powered by wind, a unique feature of Karnaka. So here we're switching off the windmill to get through the wall of light. There'll be a lot going on in this next fight. Drop attack, guards climbing and vaulting, combat choke, and Emily using far reach to pull an explosive whale oil tank toward her from a distance. All right, let's jump forward closer to our target, Vice Overseer Burn. <clears throat> the Overseers are fighting the Howler Gang for the hearts and minds of the people of Karnaka. What happens here will influence Karnaka's future and the end games. Here we're, we're going to use Emily's mesmerized power to lull a group of overseers into a stupor, evading combat altogether. Mesmerized, they won't notice Emily or even note, uh, remember that she was here. There you are. I feel huh? so empty right now. Far reach can be upgraded not only to pull objects from a distance, but also enemies, so you can finish them off in midair. Oh. 
This time, all of Emily's powers, which are new, and all of Corvo's can be fully upgraded using entirely new skill trees, giving you the ability to customize more deeply. If you're new to the Dishonored series, it's all about options and exploration, playing at your own pace. The game has many different pathways through each mission, and also different approaches, stealth or combat, lethal or non-lethal, and a wide, range of, a wide array of supernatural powers that will dramatically change the experience as you play. We're very close to Vice Overseer Burns' office now. Burn is giving a briefing using a projector. We're going to plant a stun mine and then link several of the overseers with Emily's domino power so that whatever happens to one of them will happen to all of them. They share the same fate. Switching off the projector will attract Vice Overseer Burns' attention, and when the mine affects one Overseer, it will affect all of them. Go check, brother. Right away. There are many creative ways to use Domino. Now we're going to show you Shadow Walk, another key power for Emily. Shadow Walk is useful for stealth and combat. You saw it in the uh, announced trailer that we made for the game, and you can fully use it in the game. Like all the powers, it can be upgraded in a variety of ways. With Vice Overseer Burn out of the picture, the leader of the Howlers will owe Emily a favor, and that's just one way to complete the Dust District mission. Before closing today, we want to demonstrate another signature environment from a mission called A Crack in the Slab. It's another example of the missions in Dishonored 2 and how they're built around big, interesting themes. This mission takes place in a ruined manor that's been sealed for several years. At the start, the outsider appears and explains that reality was warped inside this place after an occult event. Your supernatural powers won't work inside the manor, and even time behaves strangely, allowing you to travel back and forth between the ruined present and the past when the manor was lavish and refined. Here we're in the present, when the manor is in ruins. Now we've moved backwards, years into the past, when the manor was still inhabited and guarded. Looking through the lenses of the Outsider's timepiece, you can see the alternate timeline. This is useful for solving puzzles, as you've seen, but it can also be used to avoid or take down enemies. You can watch enemies in the alternate timeline and then step through to execute your plans. We hope you're going to love the game as much as we do. Thank you. Thank you. I have to once again give a shout out to my team in France. They've worked so hard, and they are so passionate about the game. And the first game, they're, they're really ready for you, to get it, get you guys to get your hands on it. And you don't have to wait long. Uh, all of you can leave your mark on the Empire of the Isles, um, because Dishonored 2 will release on PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and PC November 11th, 2016. But before I go, I've got one more thing for you. 
This is the worldwide launch of the Dishonored 2 gameplay trailer. You're seeing it here first. Good night. <laughs> 